Hello everyone and welcome back to our Rep Your Womanhood series. Today I have a very special guest. Her name is Samantha Strom. I'm going to give her a little introduction and then we're going to get into talking with her about all of her adventures, the cool things she's up to, and some of the awesome things that she's built. So Sam was varsity captain as a freshman in high school with honors and her club soccer team was number one in the nation and world where they took first place. And I have to sidebar this because <laughs> Jordan's sister played on that soccer team with you. Yes, I That's love really that. Really. Yeah, I love that we're all still connected too. It's so amazing. That's pretty, I love it too. And I just, I had to interject that because I'm like, this is how we all know each other. It's like family. Yeah. Um, so you guys took number one in the nation and the world, which is amazing. She attended CUI on a soccer scholarship and earned a bachelor's degree in marketing. After college, she started her own promotional modeling staffing agency with a team of 50 plus models, and you sold it five years after that, which is incredible. Soon she started Chasing Unicorns, a lifestyle blog turned e-commerce brand where she shared her findings of all things health and wellness. After three years, she's built and evolved a signature line, subscription-based model, and with a thriving community through her brand and vision. Now, I'm so stoked to have you here. We had you as a sponsor for our first ever Rep Your Womanhood event, February 2020, before the pandemic hit. Everyone who got the goodie bags with your stuff, and it was like, this is awesome. I literally got text messages and like, people reaching out afterwards like, this is so cool. It was like the bath bombs with the skulls. It was like so neat. Yay, um, I'm so happy. <laughs> so I just want you to just kind of tell our community and our sweat sisterhood a little bit about Chasing Unicorns and how you came up with the idea and the inspiration for your company. Um, okay, so after I sold Promotionality, which was the model staffing company, I realized that I wanted to sell a product and not a service. And so I went back to working. I got a corporate job doing marketing and social media and like IT and stuff. And it was fun for like a month. And then I realized like I'm not a good employee. I'm just not. I mean, I am, but it just was like not something I was passionate about. So um, one of my coworkers and I decided to start a blog and I was new to the blogging thing. I still never considered myself a blogger, but we just made an Instagram profile anonymous. And so it kind of took away the pressure of like people knowing who we are. We just made it anonymous and I would just post like everything that I really liked, which is like the woo woo whimsical stuff. And so we did that for a while. And then we did a blog post on bath bombs with crystals in the middle, which I've never seen done before. And then we ended up somehow selling it just via Instagram and we sold out in like a day. So then I was like, oh my God, this is crazy. So it just kind of like snowballed. We handmade everything in my kitchen. Um, and we were just, it was just handmade and small and super local. And um, yeah, it just kind of took off. So it went from one bath bomb to like a little just bath line, like, you know, bath salts and body polish um, body lotion. And then my business partner at the time didn't want to quit her full-time job and she was moving. And so I ended up buying her out. So it just ended up being me. And then after a year, I was like, let's do a subscription box. Like, you know, so then we kind of molded into a subscription box company, but we still do both. And yeah, it's just been really fun, really authentic to me and what I like. And the way that I do self-care is like bathing. Like it's like my meditation. I'm a water sign. I'm a Pisces. So like, you know, sometimes I'll work for a week or two and I'll get crazy. And I'm like, okay, I need to take an hour long bath. Like, So I need like everything, just anything and everything in the bath, just doing my ritual. That's really how I kind of ground myself and come back down to earth because I'm not like a traditional meditation person, although I try really hard, but like a bath bathing is like my form of meditation and just ritual. So Chasing Unicorns kind of started as like a woo woo blog and then it kind of just evolved into like monthly and daily rituals. And so, yeah, we're like the ritual brand now. I love that. For me too, I'm the same as you. I have trouble like sitting still and like doing like real meditation it's been something that I've been practicing and and Jordan you know has introduced me to it and he can sit there for 30 minutes to an hour and I'm like 
Me too. I'm so ADD. I think it's like the entrepreneur in us. Like I am always doing something. So like when I'm in the bath and I don't have my phone, it it, it feels like a meditation. And sometimes I do have my phone and I need to stop. But it's like that type of like slowing down and being really present in whatever I'm doing self-care wise is like, I consider that my meditation. But I think that's, I think what's so interesting about this. And I think what's important for, for women to hear is that, you know, I, I truly believe that meditation and grounding and centering off for a person can, can happen in so many different ways that aren't necessarily what we look at as true meditation. Yeah. For me, dancing feels like meditation. Like when I am within the music and I'm moving my body, I am so present and not thinking of anything else. Like that is movement therapy, AKA yeah. like my meditation. And I've never heard someone say it that like a, a bath is that for them. Like, and now yeah. I'm thinking like an hour long bath sounds amazing. Like who wouldn't <laughs> want to just disconnect and like be in their bath for an hour? <laughs> yeah, right. I know I live for those moments. So our, I, I really curate our boxes around everything that I do in like that type of meditation. And it's crazy. Someone's like, that seems like way too long. Like someone made a comment once because I literally will go through like 20 of everything, you know, we're as we get older, we want to do all the things and just sit there. But yeah, that's my favorite way to meditate. And I love the dancing thing too. It's been a while since I've done that type of dancing, but no, like just allowing yourself to move and, you know, no judgment. And just, I totally see that. So tell me about then if like for people who aren't familiar with your boxes, like what comes in, what could they expect to get in one of your monthly boxes? So it's, I like to, it's the ritual box. So every month in my idea, it's like what you need to do a full on bath meditation, not even a bath, but like Because when I do my rituals, I kind of like to do it all in one. Like, you know, you might stay home and have like a spa day or a wine night and you're going to do a facial, but then you're like, okay, let me do the toner and the steam and all the things. So um, our boxes are monthly ritual boxes and it's all about pampering self-care and self-love. So it's really targeted towards bath and body and shower if you don't have a bath Um, and mindfulness. So we do like journals every month has a new crystal in it. And then it's just all about self-care. So it's like skincare, um, hair care, body care, body oils. So all the tools and jazz and everything you need literally to just do a full on bougie ass self-care ritual, like um, once a month. And I like to, cause like, I know some people like to save their products, you know, like they're like, oh, I just want to use a little bit and make it really last. But like, I am like extra with everything. Like I'm like more salts, more bath salt. Like I like to use a lot. So it's like every month really is a refill, you know, like don't save things from your box. Just use it, like use it like graciously, like enjoy it. Cause next month you'll have something new and you know, the same, but it's all just about like a monthly ritual of self-care anytime, any, any type you want to do, but it's like all about self-care. I mean, I think that's, you know, what, what we preach here with hood fit is about loving yourself. You know, we're a fitness company, but it starts with within, like we want you to rep your womanhood. And that means you have to take care of yourself. So you have to learn to love yourself. And okay. Is it just me or like self-care is like a full-time job? You know what I mean? Like there's so much to do, like eating healthy, working out, meal prepping, facial hair co- brushing my hair stretching it's like there's so much <laughs> it is and that's why truly you know it's it's finding balance but it's setting your boundaries and it's making sure that you have time for yourself i Absolutely. mean as as women that are you know entrepreneurs and moms and like aunts and sisters and 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 nurturers that like take care of other things pets our pets totally. that we have you know like it's like we give so much but you can only give so much if you don't have your cup full so yeah, absolutely. you know it's like that's why we have to do these things to take care of ourselves and i love that you like put it everything in that box and i like how it's designed to 
uh, be used within that that space. Because I know I'm the same way. I look at stuff sometimes and I'm like, oh, I, I want this to last. You know, no, and then sometimes so, I wait so long that the product then goes bad. And I'm like, yeah, see, oh my God, no. I I know a lot of my best friends and my cousins and people in my life, they they have that like mentality where they want to save and, you know, like, and then it goes bad or they forget a bit about it. But I'm like, if there, it's so funny. Like, let's say there's like a little bit of this left and it's a little bit more than what you would need. I'll use it all, throw it away. Like throwing away things and decluttering is like another one of my and organizing organizing things decluttering and throwing things away it's like also like a weird meditation for me it's like I don't know I love it but we also do like wellness supplements and like this month we have electrolytes in the in the box so it's kind of like use it and enjoy it and like mindfully if you want to do it in a ritual or you want to incorporate in your life um but yeah, like I encourage people to use the box fully and like take advantage of it because the next box, it's like your own little Christmas present to yourself every month and you're just going to have items. But there's some of our loyal followers who love to save everything. And I, I look at their bathroom shelfie and everything. And I'm like, oh my God, it's so much stuff. That's amazing. I love it. They're obsessed with it. That's a good thing. Yeah. Um, but, you- sorry. No, go ahead. I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> <It's okay. laughs> um, I wanted to ask you how you came up with the name. Okay, so my first business partner, um, Johanna, she's amazing. I love her. She's doing her own thing now. But um, she was kind of sitting on this for a while. And it's so funny because she's not mystical or woo-woo at all. She's very, like, we balance each other out really well. So um, she was just kind of had this idea in her mind of starting a blog. And then I came along and it just fit perfectly Um, because chasing unicorns and marketing is like a product that takes off overnight, you know, like the Snuggie or something. And then I kind of look at chasing unicorns in like a mystical way of just chasing whatever, you know, feeds your soul, whether, you know, people agree with it or not, you know. And I am really just mystical in general. I think it's just because I'm a Pisces, but I believe I love, you know, everything, all the jazz. So it just kind of worked out perfectly. And it's it just started as a blog name. And then because it just kind of evolved and, and just kind of stayed. So we are doing a little bit of rebranding around the ritual box, which is our monthly subscription. But I think Chasing Unicorns is just here to stay as well. I love it. I, I, I'm really fa- fond of the name unicorn because when I went to my first rave, the rave name I was given was unicorn. So <laughs> that's amazing. No, I was never like a huge fan of the name until I started this blog. I was like, Oh, okay. And so everyone's like, Oh, you love unicorns. Are you unicorns? So I'm like, yeah, but the meaning of the word, the meaning of chasing unicorns could mean so many different things, you know, it's yeah. so many different things. I think it's just, one of those things that's like it's real but it's not real but it's you know so it just matched the vibes of the brand because we're super organic we put a crystal inside of most all of our signature products um yeah and we just kind of like the whole i don't want to say witchy for the lack of a better word but you know like the in tune grounded you know, no fragrance, no dyes, no glitters, no parabens, like just that clean, like connected to earth, like type of vibe. Clean and connected. I like that. That sounds really good for (laughs) self-care. Yeah. Right. I was actually, I loved, there were so many other brands out there that I loved, but I hated like the glitters or the stain your tub and like the fragrance and yeah. Yeah. I think, I mean, I, I, I'm willing to bet that all of the women watching this have experienced those types of products where, you know, it looks great and then you actually use it and you're like, oh my gosh, it's like staying in my hands or it's like this or it smells funny or it's just too extra. It's got too much extra stuff in it. Right? Yeah. I can't even, I don't even know what this product is and I'm trying to use it like on my skin and my body. Yeah. Like if the ingredients list is like this long, like no, red flag. Yeah, that's a serious red flag. And when it comes to bath bombs, because I love bathing, I used to, when I used to love all like the flower baths and like, 
you know, Lush Cosmetics has all like the cool ones and they're all different colors, but then you have to clean your tub after. And I am so <laughs> low maintenance. I'm like, no, just a regular bathtub, flat, plain white, like that doesn't like stain your tub, doesn't stain your skin. Yep. Yeah. That's my vibe. <laughs> you don't have to clean after. That's good. I, that the easier the cleanup, like the better, right? Yeah. You take care of yourself. You don't have to spend like hours taking care of cleanup. Exactly. Um, so you mentioned earlier about another form of like meditation for you being super organized and like decluttering. I'm interested to hear more about this. I am someone who like holds on to stuff. Jordan is constantly like, how do you function? Oh my God. Okay. I used to be like that too, but I don't know what came over me. I think two years ago, I, I don't know if I watched a show. Um, and I saw both of my grandparents on my mom's side and my dad's side, they're kind of like hoarders. Mm. And it was like, like, okay, like you're going to save this plastic fork <laughs> because you think you're going to use it in the future. Like, no, like, throw it away, you know, <laughs> like they should save everything. Like, you know, that meant, I think it just comes from like, I don't, a, maybe a lack mentality where like, I think in abundance all the time, maybe too much. I'm like, woo, Sam, chill the fuck out. Like, stop, you know, <laughs> but, um, there's literally decluttering, I think is a spiritual practice where you're opening up space and you're getting rid of energy that no longer serves you. Like whether it's like a t-shirt from high school that you know, you're never going to wear again. Like it's like kind of like go playing off of minimalism, but like not all like hippy dippy. I don't know. And I'm not the most organized person either. Like sometimes my days and my, I'm very messy. Like if you ask my manager, Ashley, she'll be like, Sam, like, it looks like a tornado just came in here. But then like the act of like organizing everything and, and like putting everything in one delegated spot or like getting rid of trash that I'm never going to use. It literally is calming to someone like me who can always be like, go, 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 you know, all these ideas and stuff. So like organizing and decluttering and getting rid of anything within the house or my workspace that, you know, is not usable. Like it's even bad. Like sometimes things will be like a little bit less and I'm like, nope, bye. It's, I don't know. It's, I think it's like a, literally a spiritual practice. Like you feel lighter, you just yeah. feel good. So I always recommend, and I've gotten my sister and my other business partner onto this. And then they're obsessed too. Cause you just got to start with like one area of your life. I think just everything having a spot Honestly, I just binge watched the home edit, which probably wasn't good either. But like now, like everything needs to have a bin. But um, yeah, I don't know what it is. Sometimes like I'll go through the week and then on Friday, I'll just take a few hours to like clean up my disaster of a mess I made yeah. um, with work and stuff. And it just is like it like calms my anxiety then I should do that more. I'm going to take you up on that. I do that in my, in my home gym, but I feel like I need to like do that in my closet too. Oh my God. No, you will literally become, you will see what I'm saying. Start with your closet, take everything out and put everything back. I know, I know just in, in, in that leftover energy, like of what you, you want to wear or not wear, or even just start with like one cabinet or one drawer in your kitchen. Yeah. Like the kitchen's there's... pretty good. Cause Jordan's involved in, in that shared space. Yeah. Jordan's like the neat freak. So like anything that's like my own other than like, I mean, the gym, you know, it's my, it's my workspace, but yeah. yeah, treating it like that. I think it's good to, to also look at it. I've, kind of never heard people talk about like it being a ritual or meditative thing for someone. But I, I know, I know that I can relate to that feeling because when the closet is clean and everything is in its place and it's like super organized, I'm like, I can breathe. Yeah. <laughs> and I am not the most like organized cleanest person. Like I think just we're very similar and being really active and entrepreneur and wanting and so many ideas. So when I do get really excited like that and my space isn't like, it's like a, it's, you know, it's like chaos and then chaos. So even though I'm a very chaotic person, sometimes when I need my space to be 
structured. It's so funny. It's like my, my friend, one of my best friends was like, described me. She was so funny. She's like, it's, you're so, I forgot the word she used, but she was like, you're such a balance of needing like structure and like free spirit. It's hilarious. I don't get it. <laughs> but I think that's what's so interesting is that I found like as being an entrepreneur, because I mean, always being that creative and like being able to just express myself with like dance and movement. Um, I knew I got my marketing degree too, as well. And um, I, I knew the structure that it would take and how, like what it would mean for me to jump into uh, running a business. Like I knew how much work that was going to be, but yeah. like, there's like this thing in my mind where it like almost wants to like fight itself because it's like the creative, like artist side of me. And then the person who has to be like the business side and think of things differently. It's like this constant oh my daily- God. girl, <laughs> totally. Like my bookkeeping, I hate doing accounting. Like I hate all of that stuff. Like, so yeah, it's just, I totally get it, but it's like, you have to have it. Like you have to do it. Right. So I guess that would lead me into a question for you about, you know, cause you're a young entrepreneur yourself. So what would be some advice you would give to another young female entrepreneur? Depending on what type, actually my best advice would be social media. Like, especially, I mean, I don't think it's going anywhere anytime soon, but for the first like three years of my business, I didn't do any paid marketing. It was literally all through social media. Um, and I have a, a few friends who can relate to this, but like, I think what really helped me was I started a separate Instagram anonymously. Like I didn't be like, this is my company. Follow me. I have no followers, you know? So it gave me this, like, I was a new person. I, all of my following on Chasing Unicorns was not my family or my friends or my network until I reached like 50,000 followers. So I was able to just like be creative and not deal with judgment of people and my, you know, cause like, it's so weird. It's, you know what I mean? Honey. So that's like, that's like one thing that kind of like helped me because my Chasing Unicorns persona is also different than my personal Instagram. They're just two yeah. separate entities. Um, and my other advice would be to Google. Like you can literally find anything out on Google these days or YouTube. It's so funny. I get DMs sometimes of people and they ask the most, like bless their heart, you know, but it's like, you can Google this. Like, I don't have time to sit here and like, you know, teach you how to make a Gmail account or something, you know, you just like really Google. And I think not everyone is meant to be an entrepreneur too. I think with social media, so many people want to like feel pressured to do their own thing, but like it is very stressful, especially if you don't have investors or loans or just depending on what your goals are. Um, not everyone is meant to be an entrepreneur as well. I think people make great teammates, you know, um, and that's another thing. And also if someone is passionate about something, like you just have to start. Like, I just think starting and learning as you go. Like I literally made so many mistakes. I learned as I went and I'm still learning as I go. <laughs> so I think young entrepreneurs, you just need to start, create a goal plan and like a little outline and Google and YouTube everything or find like a mentor. This is all really, really spot on advice because I mean, I know I can relate to everything that you just said. Um, I'm a little bit older than you, but I can still totally relate to that. And, you know, even in our business with something is, it's, it's so true. It's like, you don't know what you don't know, but there's answers out there. And there's so many times where Jordan and I are working together and I'm like, oh, how do I do this thing? Especially in navigating the digital space, which we know is like, you know, ever changing every day. And there's new technology and new apps and new social platforms, like, you know, and it's just like there, YouTube it, Google it, figure it out. Like there's no, like out there. It took me like 10 YouTubes to figure out TikTok. Like I was like, I don't get this. And then I was like, okay, like asking my friends and then watching YouTube, like you have to pick the trending songs. And I'm like, if I have to learn one more social media, like. <laughs> that's, that's how I feel too. Like I, I totally got that way. I told Jordan I had to put a hard pause on TikTok during COVID. Cause I was like, I don't have the bandwidth to 
process yeah. <laughs> that platform right now? <laughs> I really, yeah, no, like I love Instagram and I love Instagram rules. Instagram is always going to be my number one. And sometimes I think if you have a number one, like just stick to that maybe, but I think well, they all, I just, I like the way that you approached your start to your company and on social media, on Instagram of it being separate. And it was like this account that like, wasn't your family and friends. It was, you weren't like, this is my business. It was kind of like your little secret because it does feel like, I, I feel like when you step into being an entrepreneur and you start to put yourself out there, I mean, you're, you're ready to take on criticism from any, I think I, and I, I talked in a podcast recently with someone about, you know, they were like, what was the, the biggest thing that you uh, came, didn't expect when you started your business? And I was like, the outpouring of people giving me their opinions that I didn't ask for. Right? Oh my God. And okay, this is just something that is a thing and it's not like your supporters are not going to be your friends and family. So just get over it. They're not. So don't try to market to them. Don't go to your neighbors. Like just get over it. They're not going to be your supporters, but they're going to love you forever. You know, like they have their own things going on. And no, my friends and family are my biggest supporters, you know, but they're not like my highest paying customers, you know, like it's just chasing unicorns. It's like totally, it's like this new family. And I didn't even really realize I was like being anonymous until I looked back on it because it was something I started separately and I just kept it to myself. I didn't tell like my following. And so I was able to make a such a more authentic presence of like who I was because you know, like you don't want your ex-boyfriends and like your friends and family, at least where I was. Not that I even thought of that at the time, but looking back, yeah. it just made being authentic and myself so much easier. And then I got to connect with Soul Tribe around the world who like resonated with me and like now we're like internet best friends, you know? Yeah. So I think that was just something really interesting. I, I realized looking back two years later was like, wow, I really started this like anonymously for lack of a better word. Yeah. And I think that's why it just helped me blow up so fast because I didn't have any type of fear or anyone who knew me. It was just like a whole new person. Yeah. I really, I like, I just love the way that that unfolded, even with you not preemptively like planning it that way, that it just happened that way for you. Because again, I think with it being like less fearful, less stressful, less like already, like, you know, with other people that already knew you, uh, giving feedback, like you were able to just show up and be your authentic self. And clearly that like brought people and attracted people to you. Yeah. Um, how many people have you like, cause I mean, I I'm still learning. I have, I feel like I have a love hate relationship with Instagram. I know me too, girl. Everyone does all my <laughs> other, and they're doing weird things with the algorithm. Like, you know, I just started paid advertising last year Okay. Um, but it was so weird. Like Instagram's consistently changing. And so, yeah, I have a lovely relationship with Instagram outside of just monetizing it too, because yeah, yeah, because you want it to be, you want Instagram to be, especially if you're doing it both, like if it's your personal and your business, you want it to be like fun and networky, but it's also, it's, it's marketing. So it's literally marketing at the end of the day, every single post you post, whether you're have a business or not, you're some type of influence. And so it does come with a little bit of pressure, I think for everyone. Oh, I think everyone can definitely agree on that. (laughs) It is a love hate. Like I want to see what you're doing. What are you eating? But then like, I need to put my phone down. Like really Sam, you just spent an hour scrolling, like stop, get a life. (laughs) No, that's why you have to set like those timers to like kick you off after you've been on for too long. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've been really great now. I've just been so busy. I can't keep up with everyone. Um, yeah. That's a good thing. Well, you mentioned uh, meeting people online. Tell me about like, cause I'm curious. Cause again, like it is interesting, you know, you're a little bit younger than I am. So like Facebook had just gotten started when I was in college, like we like I had gotten on Instagram way later like once I was already like living in Hollywood and like training and working there and like working in the fitness studios and I find it interesting on like how to connect with people and like 
I think it's very rarely happened in my case of like becoming friends with people, like friends, friends, close friends. So tell me a little bit about like your experiences with like connecting with people online and like having those people turn into friends or acquaintances or like people in your network. So there's a few different categories. Like when we were first starting out um, and trying to make this a business and like, you know, just doing all the things. Um, yeah, we, we just had a few loyal supporters. Like, do you ever notice like the same person likes your photo over and over? Like, so it was like, yeah, it was just a support of like a few of our first customers that ended up being loyal forever. Like I remember one girl ordered from us so many times and then she was in California just visiting from Arizona and like she DM'd us and was like, hey, I'm in town. And like, we ended up getting ice cream and coffee and like, she was so cool. And it was just such a unique experience. Like it felt like a first date and it really was. But to this day, we're still friends. She just moved to Hawaii. Um, yeah, and then there's a few other ones who they're also entrepreneurs too. They started their business and we both support each other and we're watching each other grow like from where we started. And so it's just this connection of like sending each other free product or being pen pals or just the support that like, I think also as entrepreneurs, we're so likely to support other people because maybe we didn't get that you know, from certain people. So it's like strangers supporting strangers, but like going through the same journey. And so there's like five or seven people on Instagram who are other entrepreneurs that I love. Like we've met up, we have dinner, we always talk, we brew each other on like, oh my God, you know? So yeah, there's definitely, I've definitely made, made pen pals or we just send each other gifts like once a year all the time or the first few people who consistent always support me. Like there's a few people right now on DM and they just buy my products like every week and I have to talk to them and get to know them. Like, thank you so much. Like, how is your kid doing? I hope she likes her jacket. And so I think just building that personal connection is important. And obviously you can't do it with everyone, but um yeah, there was a few times starting up where we actually met up in person and it just felt like we knew each other forever. And so it was really fun. I feel like on Chasing Unicorns, I do have a little community that's been with me from the start and they're still with me. Um, and so that's been like really special just to have their support and, you know, shipping me stuff from the things that they make or shipping me shipping them stuff like as a surprise. So it's just like this little family that's so, you know, we all started with maybe like a thousand followers, you know, and we're yeah. still friends now. I love that. I mean, I know that I've, you know, it's been um, interesting because I've been talking with people obviously through the screen um, <laughs> through over this past year and going on now a little over a year. And um, it's, uh, you know, I've had people that I think it's hard sometimes for people that maybe aren't entrepreneurs that are just trying to connect with, you know, once you're in that adulthood phase of your life um, and you're not in school and you're not around people and there's a pandemic happening, it's like, how do you meet people? And I think that's a good thing is like, you met with a like-minded people, the other entrepreneurs. So like people finding that like-minded uh, group of individuals that are have the same interests and then being, you know, open and vulnerable to speak up and talk in that group so that people can get to know you. It's like yeah. the sweat sisterhood group that we have. It's like, you know, been a beautiful, slow building process, but it's like getting people together who want to take care of themselves and move their bodies and move to feel good, you know, uh, and it, it's a safe space where you can ask your questions about what you're going through and that someone in that group, I think this is the beautiful thing is that it can tie in all together to where if I don't have that answer, if I haven't been through that experience in my life, that there might be someone collectively in that group that has, and that can help that person that's going through that thing at that time. Absolutely. I love that. And that's why I love what you're doing so much. And I'm so excited to be part of this now. And like, if I'm ever in Palm Desert or in the area, like we definitely have to link up, especially with some of your other people in your community, because I love that. Like I'm getting older now and our priorities are shifting, you know, like I'm not partying anymore. I'm not just meeting people out and about because, you know, yeah. if I do have free time now, it's literally paying, paying like catch up. So yeah, it is 
getting that like-minded community and then like already, you know, having something there. So you can generate friendships because yeah, when you do get older, it is a little bit hard to build like authentic friendships or like best friends if you're not already best friends with them. And then as you do get older, you kind of drift apart from people as you start to change. And yeah, like just the healthy lifestyle and fitness and self-care is like really what I'm about. And I love connecting with people like that too, because it's like, okay, we're on the same page. If I don't text you back, it's fine. You're not going to be mad about it, but it's like on our own time as adults and we're all in our own space, but we're all here for each other and can relate to each other. And, you know, all everyone wants to feel part of something at the end of the day. So I love that. I love what you're doing. We have to do the same thing with our community and like a Facebook community group. And it's just something also a little bit, you know, outside of like your family or your best friends or your coworkers, it's like, okay, like I have a new community. And it's so funny because you can be part of like six communities and they'll all be a little bit different, but you all gain like some, you know, a little bit of everything from just being a part of that. Well, yeah, because you can, you can always learn something from someone, someone you can always learn from their, what they've walked in their shoes is completely different from what you've experienced in yours, you know, and, yeah. and that's the beauty of it is like being open to connect, being open to learn from one another and like grow with one another. That's what we should all be just coming together for is like the better good. Yeah. Lord knows the world needs this right now. <laughs> right. Oh my God, girl. I know. I know. <laughs> the last two years just was, has been so insane. Tell us a little like, bit. Definitely blessing and curse. Like both um, such amazing things have happened in, because of this. But yeah, like crazy. Well, and that's what I want to know about too, is that um, last year I saw you in Bali. Is that right? How long were you in Bali for? Tell us why and what you were doing. So I was in Bali for seven months. I just got back um, a few weeks ago and I was in Hawaii for four months before that. So I was gone like the whole last year. And to be honest, um, I just had a sense to like get out a little bit and I was using a fulfillment center. So I was able to manage my company digitally. So I wanted to be a digital nomad for a little. I just wanted to explore and be on my own and um, go to the beach and just do my own thing. And uh, my other business partner, she was with me, but like in her own space. So we were in Hawaii, we were starting a company together. So we both went out there and kind of did that, but like relaxed a little bit, surfed a little bit. And then in Bali, I was on my own and um, she ended up coming out too, but like in living in another city. Um, but it was just really about, I wanted to slow down a little bit because before I transferred to Fulfillment Center, I was packing orders out of my house. I was exhausted. I was just a little burnt out on everything. And I just wanted to travel and like save money. Like I got rid of my car, which I have to get another one now, but I'm just like, okay, I'm just going to do this. And honestly, I would have traveled um, at least for another year or two. I didn't have any plans on coming home, but the last few months I kept having issues with my fulfillment center and it was really sucky because fulfillment center is an amazing way to go to, which this could be another trip tip for entrepreneurs. Like if you just have one product, and you're doing high amounts of volume, like a fulfillment center is very great. It's like, they, they really can't fuck that up. You know, you put it in the box, ship it out. Um, like, but I, there is something about the sub box model and the fact that we're also e-commerce. So someone can buy one product, they could buy 20 products, they could buy different types of boxes. They could buy the ritual box three months, they could add on items to their ritual box. And for some reason, that just blew my fulfillment center's mind. So I was like, what's going on? Like, you know, they were shipping wrong things, the wrong people, they were getting, they weren't getting the best prices on shipping. And, and that's the thing also, when you go to fulfillment, it's not super personable. You know, I didn't no, no, realize how much inventory I had in. And so I realized like, okay, I need to come home and just kind of be back on the ground again and hire my own team see what's going on, how we could fix certain issues. Um, and there's a lot of other fulfillment centers I was going to go with too, but they like just charge crazy high amounts. Um, so yeah, I was going to travel for another two years and just be a digital nomad, but 
the universe is like, no, it's not that easy. You got to come back here and lay this foundation a little bit better because your fulfillment is fucking up. You know, I was like, damn it. Okay. But now that I'm, now that I'm in my own place and I am building a team and I can see the inventory and, you know, sell out on stories and just kind of see if this is going to be sustainable long-term. And I really believe that it is. It's been amazing, like blessing for me, but yeah, so I'm here now and wanting to set my foundation. That's the only reason why I came home, but I did learn so much being away on just how my business was running and like the type of person I wanted to be and how much freedom is so important to me. Like, I don't want to be a slave to work for the rest of my life. So if I have to put in a few years and really build this out, that's my goal because I really do love the freedom to plan my days out. You know, now that I'm at the warehouse, it's like, all right, it's eight to five job, which is another thing entrepreneurs should know is like, depending on your line of work, like, you might not work like eight hour days with someone else, but you're going to work like 40 hour days for yourself, you know? So yeah, well, I think it's so neat that you see tomorrow. See you tomorrow. 10 a.m. Great job today. Thank you. Bye. See, always working. <laughs> I know that was it's sub box week right now. That was one of our new girls. She's so awesome. So I think we got through a couple hundred. So yeah. Girl, I just, I'm on the ground now. I'm like, all right, let's make this work. Fulfillment didn't work, so. I love that you were able, though, to step away and do that. And also, you know, like selling your car, going away, like doing it digitally and like testing it out to see how it worked, allowing yourself. I know a lot of women sometimes think, oh, I can't do that. Like I have, you know, uh, prior commitments or like things that like, you know, they just won't swing it. It's like that fearful step to just like, do I deserve to go be traveling and like being somewhere else? And like, you did that. So I think that's awesome. And I'm, I'm curious to know, like, where do you see chasing unicorns and Samantha Strom go? Like, what's your ultimate like goal? My ultimate goal is to build a company that will last forever. That will give me the financial freedom to live the life that I, I want to live. Um, which just comes down to freedom of like being able to do, like, I want to go surfing right now. You know, what if I want to go surfing right now? Um, so yeah, my goal with chasing unicorns is to build it something that will last and grow forever. And I want to be one of the best subscription boxes on the market. Oh no. Did I? Okay. I thought you were frozen for a second. <laughs> um, and yeah, I, our mission is, um, spreading unconditional self-love and my whole life purpose, I think, is finding unconditional self-love and spreading that. And I'm still single right now. I do want to make space for a husband and a baby soon. But like being able to travel for a year and date new people and eat by myself and go shopping, it was really and just experience different cultures and lay in bed all day or work all day for my laptop. Like it was amazing. And I really loved it. And it also, after the fulfillment thing, I was like, okay, I'm ready to come home now and build a solid foundation um, with my company and with my new house and my new car. But, um, but yeah, so for chasing unicorns, I want to spread self love, unconditional self love and build a company that could just run on its own and bring little boxes of joy to everyone every month. Well, I love what you stand for. I love what you're doing. I think you're going to be so successful. I actually know you're going to be so successful because I just, I see it in your spirit. I see it in your heart. You have goodwill and intention and you're, you're doing so much and working so hard to give back to others, to take care of themselves and to teach them how to love themselves. So I just think it's absolutely incredible. Um, I want to thank you for your time here, for uh, taking time out of your busy day to, to meet with us and talk with our community. And I want to finish up with just one last question that I ask all of our people that uh, we have on our series. And that is, what does Rep Your Womanhood mean to you? Rep my womanhood means to me, like when I think of feminine energy, I just think of nurturing energy. And like, I think it's so cool because females come together and we create communities. And it's so funny because I know a lot of 
male friends in my life or husbands of all my girlfriends and they get like a little bit jealous for lack of a better word because they might have just like one or two friends and females over here have like communities and sisterhoods and you know what I mean so rep my womanhood really is just like female empowerment of supporting each other and what in our journeys like even like me and you like today was this is like the highlight of my day just talking to you I love your energy and everything about you and I think females have that type of energy of just inclusivity and nurturing and community and non-judgment. And I'm not saying that males don't. Yeah. I'm just saying we have that. And so repping that type of womanhood and making everyone feel like they have a community to come to, I think is something that females just do naturally. And I think that's really important, especially during these times. Oh my gosh, more than ever, we need each other and we need our communities. Right. I mean, that's what's gotten me through other than like having a great supportive husband. But like, honestly, it's like leaning on my fellow sisters has just been, yeah. like, I never had, I have brothers. I never had sisters. So like I thrive and live for that because like, it brings me so much joy to yeah. just have that community of strong divine feminine energy. I love it. Yeah. And we, we know we like, we already know like what the deal is. We're emotional. We're intuitive. Exactly. We understand each other. Like we get it. We support each other and it's amazing. And I love what you're doing. I love what I'm doing. I think community is such a strong base of both of our like foundations and I think rep your womanhood just is like an embodiment of all of that which is so amazing and I can't wait to like be on your next workout because I'm so bummed I missed the last one. Oh honey I just want to give you a big hug through the screen. I know. <laughs> well thank you so much again for taking the time I'm so happy to share you guys with I'm Sam with you guys because she's just incredible and I'll put all of our information in the caption below so that you can find her, you can find Chasing Unicorns, get yourself a little ritual box, take care of yourself, have a nice long bath. Like, I wanna do that. That's what I'm yes. like. Yes. Like, you have to text me your address, your okay. new address. Okay, I will, I will. I'm gonna put some stuff in there for Jordan too. Oh good, he'll love that. Anything for his bald head too. He likes to like, you know, make sure that it's nice and groomed and soft. <laughs> yes, I got it, I swear. I, I'm like already thinking of a box. Done. <laughs> and that's why I love having my new warehouse because I can actually see on my inventory. Like I, it was, it was like buried the past year. So it's, it's exciting. Really cool, congratulations on your new warehouse. That's amazing that you have that space and all that you've built up into this point, like literally starting from at home in your kitchen to like where you are now. I can't wait to see where you go and how you grow. And I'm excited to grow alongside you too. So thank you so much. I oh, thank you. So happy to have you. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Okay. I'll see you soon. Okay. Bye. Bye.